Hey everyone, this is Ed Brzee with Boomer Tech Adventures. I'm here with my two colleagues, Jill Spencer and Chris Toy, and you'll be hearing from both of them in just a few minutes. We're going to talk a little bit about the um, the Apple Health app that comes on your iPhone and your iPad. And it is an amazing app. It does so many different things. It can be fairly complex, but it can you can make it as simple as possible too. Um, one of the reasons why it's so useful, I think, is that um, it's important for you to keep up to date uh, and use it. You can keep all kinds of health information in one place that's very usable for you and for others. And there's a lot of learning that goes on in the health app as well. There are lots of good articles that can um, um, that you can learn from. So it's it's kind of like a one-stop shopping for for health. Um, privacy and uh, security is is a very big issue, obviously, with putting um, very personal kinds of information about about your health. And there's a lot of information there. We're not going to try to do all that today because that's a separate podcast, but we'll do that sometime soon. But it's there and we'll show you how to get the how to get to that. I'd like to take just just a minute to get us started and then Jill's going to jump in and then Chris with other aspects. We're not going to cover everything today because there's so much to do with the health app. But as you can see on my screen, um, the little health app with the red heart. I'm going to touch that, and then we immediately go into the health app. Across the bottom, you can see uh, three different tabs. We're in summary right now. Um, we can do sharing of the information. That's the second tab, and then the browse tab that I'll look at in just just a minute. Um, I do have to admit, I'm a little I'm healthier than what. Uh, well, you're going to see on my screen <laughs> because one of the things that you need to have is either an Apple Watch that uh, that records this stuff when you're out running or cycling or swimming. Um, and Jill's going to talk about the connection between the Apple Watch and the um, and the Health app on your iPhone. Um, I don't have that, and I don't if I don't have the um, my phone in my back pocket, then I'm not recording. So. That's just kind of, I'm just letting you know, I'm healthier than than these uh, figures will look. Um, but just a number of things. So we're in the summary section. There's a uh, medical ID access. I'm not gonna show you right now because that has all my personal stuff, but it gives all the information, your blood type and, and a number of other things and your, your, um, your doctors who you can call and that sort of thing. Um, there are a couple of favorites here. Chris is going to talk about um, about cycling and another um, app that connects to this. Uh, trends, highlights, um, and so on and so forth. But I'm going to move over to the browse section so you can see some of the different categories that um, that you can go to um, under activity. It it talks about um, resting energy and steps, walking and running distance, flights uh, uh, flights of stairs climbed. Um, I've got body measurements here, and that's personal, so I won't stay on that. Um, and just a variety of other things like hearing, information about the heart, this is pretty interesting. Um, AFib history, blood pressure, and again, I don't have any of this information in on mine, um, but it talks a little bit about, for example, blood pressure, um, an issue that a number of uh, boomers have a, uh, a concern about, and it has some information about blood pressure, and then it has the connecting blood pressure apps that give you even more information about that. So all these different sections, uh, cardio fitness, a little bit more about that, uh, what that does and why it's good for you, um, what it means if your cardio fitness is low, and um, just an example of how you can uh, keep information and get information from this particular uh, app. Um, heart rate, um, I'll just show you that one too, more information about heart rate, and so on and so forth. So an awful lot of information under uh, just heart itself. 
and then going back to the browsing section. Um, medications, you can put your medications here. Uh, mobility, nutrition, information about sleep, um, and other kinds of things. So as I said before, it can be very complex, but it, you can you can make it much simpler than it than it appears right here. It's a great place to keep lots of information in one place. I think I'll stop there. And I'm going, Jill, I'll let you take over the screen sharing and talk about right. the connection between your watch and the and the iPad and the app. All righty. So I've got an iWatch for two reasons. Uh, number one, I like a watch. I'm not one that carries uh, my phone around with me all the time. And uh, okay, there we go. The second is that it also tracks my activity. Now, on, um, I'm just going to go back. When you get an iWatch or an Apple Watch, you also have this watch app. And what it does is on your phone, you set up what you want your watch to track. So I'll go there. You can see I have faces. And you will notice the middle one that says 10.09, last timer is 15. Well, actually, it's five minutes. And so I'm setting my timer for five minutes so I don't talk longer in that. But that's great. You know, if you're doing um, walking and you want to walk really fast, power walk for two or three minutes, you can set your timer and you can do it and you get a buzz on your wrist and you know that you can go back to normal pace. So that's kind of fun. So you see that there's all sorts of things that I can set up. Uh, under general, I have um, the basic stuff related to your phone, uh, related to any of your devices. So that really doesn't have too much to do with my watch. However, under activity, I can uh, set up to have reminders. And so my watch every once in a while will beep and say, hey, Jill, it's time to stand up when I've gotten engrossed in a novel and um, haven't stood up for like an hour and a half. Uh, it gives me daily coaching. Now you can turn this stuff on and off, but I find these helpful just to remind me. It's awfully easy to be very sedentary. Uh, goal completions, the little phone or the little watch gets very excited and says, oh, you've completed your activity, uh, special changes, uh, challenges, et cetera. Uh, let's see, what else? Find my hand washing. Well, you know, back when we were all reminded that we needed to wash our hands during the height of COVID, I could have set a, set a timer so that I know that I was washing my hands for the right amount of time. And again, it would buzz on my wrist. One I like is mindfulness and I've got it set up. So at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, I get a little message on my watch face that says, take a minute to reflect. And I think that's important um, because it's so easy to get caught up on minutia of the day. And so I get this little message, take a time to reflect, Jill, before you start your day, now at the end of the day. And it just sort of gives me a chance to center, and I th I'm pretty sure that's pretty healthy. Um, let's see. I could monitor my sleep, but I don't do that. Workout. Uh, again, I've got things to remind me to start, et cetera. Now. I can set goals. And when I set a goal, it'd be how much, how many minutes a day do I want to exercise? Uh, how long do I want to watch? And although I can't, I can't put my watch face up here, but when I uh, go to my uh, watch and I go to my three circles, and uh, I find out, so for example, today, well, I've uh, used 38 of the 320 
uh, calories I hope to burn today. So I have to get going. I've not exercised at all. Uh, I've taken 236 steps now. I don't often make the 10,000 steps a day, but uh, as you can see, I have quite a ways to go. And if I were to go to the heart, the health app, which is back here, again, uh, I have a summary, steps that I've taken, trends, uh, it tells me if a headphone audio levels, how they're doing, because a lot of times people blast, um, blast them. It will also remind me that uh, this week I've only done two workouts. I'm a little bit behind. I should be doing those daily. Uh, exercise minutes. So it gives me a lot of information. Now, I don't have AFib, but I have friends that do. And uh, being able to track some of that information via their watch, via their health app mm -hmm. um, would be really useful. So I find the watch very useful to get me up, get me moving, to remind me um, that I need to uh, get some more steps in, to remind me that um, if I really want to burn some calories, I have to do more than stand and um, use my computer. So that's how I use the, the health app at this point. I connect it to my watch and it keeps a summary for me. So that would be on to Chris, I think, who's gonna show us an actual uh, app that he uses. All right, so let's see if I can remember all the steps <laughs> to, uh, here we go, I am here. And Let's go to, so I use um, a standalone app. It's known as Strava and you can, um, you can download and use it for free. And if you want more uh, information, you can, um, you can do in-app pur purchases. So that Strava is that little orange one in the upper, uh, right hand corner just let me tap on that and it pops right up and it shows one of my recent uh, rides and when you um, do the ride you can you can name it so that was a morning ride to coffee uh, the app automatically will create a map of your ride and what's really fun is it'll give you some statistics. So those of you who want to know how far you've gone, so this was, you know, 11, 11 miles or so, it tells you how, how long you were moving. Um, and this is a nice little uh, piece of information. So if I, you know, if I go halfway through the ride and I stop for coffee, uh, the app knows that I've mm -hmm. stopped and it actually stops the timer. And then uh, once I start up again, it'll start up. And at the end of the ride, it'll actually only measure the amount of time that I was moving so that when I get my average speed, it's not like, you know, two miles an hour because I, you know, took five hours to, to enjoy my cup of coffee. <laughs> if I tap on any of this, uh, of this analysis, see it down at the bottom there, it says view analysis. I can tap on that and it will actually give a graph of uh, the elevation gain that I did. And you can kind of see those ups and downs are basically a uh, graph of the uh, topology, you know, so the hills that I went up and down, you can kind of see that it will graph my speed. And uh, you, if you look carefully enough, you can see that on the uphills, I went slower. Mm. <laughs> and on the downhills, I, I went as fast as I could. See, there it is there. It gives me my average speed. There's my maximum speed. I went 36, almost 37 miles an hour on the downhills. Oh, the that's pretty yeah. fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's great. I, I, wow, that's why we like downhills. Uh -uh. Um, and then it'll also... Um, kind of tell you 
you know, how much energy you've used, <clears throat> things like that. So they're really, it's, it's really kind of fun. And you can um, actually, it will show you, uh, this is a social app. So uh, the app actually has names for the different segments of your ride. So you can see there's Granny's Tickler, uh, there's Whiskey Hill, and then the only smooth road in Bath. And hopefully they'll, <laughs> you know, hopefully they'll pave, the, pave, pave the rest of them. It's, uh, it's really a good app. It's really easy to use. Uh, way at way at the bottom, you'll see where it says home maps and record. All you have to do to remember is you have your phone with you just before you get on your, your bike um, or on your run um, or your ride or whatever it may be. You just hit the record and it just automatically does all of that work for you. Um, I won't show you here because we don't have time, but this app and other apps can be connected to your Apple Health app. So all of this information can go into your Apple app so that you can have all that in one place. So that's Strava. And um, I, I try to remember to use that whenever I... Um, whenever I, I get on my bike. Chris, so, while you were talking, yeah. I went to the app store and I have, uh, it's free. I started to download it. It's free. And it does say run, ride and hike. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of a multifaceted app there. Yep. And, and Chris and Jill, just as another way to access Strava as an example, Back in the health app under cycling distance, it uh, Strava is one of five different apps that they are recommending or suggesting. So there are multiple multiple ways to get to the apps through the health um, app itself. Yes. Exactly. Oh, look and at that app, picture. So the app lets you post photographs of. Um, you know, of, of what you, or, or, or of where you've been and what you've done. <laughs> so that's, that's a lobster roll. I, I went for a ride. That was the large lobster roll. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my ride. And here are some things that I saw on, on my ride, some Osprey. So great fun. So back to you, Ed, you can Good. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, great. Well, that's just a, a quick overview of the health app and, and related integrated apps like Strava that Chris just mentioned. So just very briefly, one of the great aspects of the health app is, is that it, it shows you important changes and sends you alerts as you need them. It, get, it gets insights from your data, which I think is very important. And it helps us all learn about essential topics uh, related to our health. So we'll do we'll do more um, YouTube videos through Boomer Tech Adventures. We'll also probably do another podcast or two or three about the health uh, about the health app. And uh, do stay with us and take a look at uh, Boomer Tech Adventures uh, website and, as I said, our YouTube channel. Jill and Chris, anything else? Not today. Okay, we'll sign off then. Thanks, everybody. Stay healthy and use the health app.